well, we've been doing Raspberry Pi for a long time now. Uh, the foundation itself is very nearly 15 years old, and the genesis of the Raspberry Pi idea probably goes back to about 2016. So this is something we, it's not going to be long before we've been doing this for two decades. Now, all the way through that time, there's been a very consistent underlying mission, and that's to get, get young people interested in computers in the same way that I and many of my friends, many of my colleagues here at Raspberry Pi, were interested in computers. The things that led, that level of interest that led us into the engineering careers that we've that we've enjoyed. Um, so that's always been the kind of the underpinning of it. I guess probably the level of ambition there has grown from uh, let's get more students to apply to Cambridge to let's get more kids across the UK uh, interested in computing to get let's get kids around the world interested in computing. So there's been kind of an expansion of that ambition without really a change in what the underlying uh, ethos of the organisation is. I guess what has changed though um, and some of this change happened very early on, is our engagement with uh, adult hobbyists. Many of our earliest customers at Raspberry Pi, you think about the 100,000 Raspberry Pis we sold on our first day back in 2012, those didn't sell to kids, right? They sold to adult hobbyists like me. So we, I think we hadn't appreciated the extent to which there would be interest um, in Raspberry Pi from the hobbyist community. And I think we also hadn't appreciated the extent to which that over time, that interest in the hobbyist community, because many of those hobbyists, of course, are professional design engineers, the extent to which that hobbyist interest would then bleed across into industrial use of Raspberry Pi, to the point where now probably 60-70% of Raspberry Pis that we sell go into industrial rather than what we would call consumer enthusiast and education users. Physical retailers like Micro Center are really important to us because they bring a degree of immediacy to the Raspberry Pi purchasing experience. They give people who are local to a bricks and mortar store. And of course, it's a product which is in such demand that actually the definition of local can be quite wide. I mean, here in, even in the UK, where we aren't used to traveling anything like the kind of distances that you are in the US, you'll see people drive 50 miles to come to the store here in Cambridge. Um, that immediacy, the, the wake up in the morning, need a Raspberry Pi, have it by lunchtime, um, is, it's not something that you can replicate. Um, using online, uh, using using online sales, so that's important. It also gives people access to a to a base of, um, I guess, of expertise with the product. Um, it, Raspberry Pi only achieves its educational mission if it attracts people who are not already very au fait with what a Raspberry Pi can do. And so, having people in our store, having people in Microsoft stores who understand the product can explain it to newcomers. Uh, it, it's it's, it's, you know, it's important for us as a business, but it's also you know, harking back to that ed educational mission. It's also important to fulfilling, I guess, our goals and also Microsoft's goals as mission-led organizations. Um, I think in one year, hopefully, Raspberry Pi will have uh, recovered from the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, obviously, we are living at the moment through a period of supply chain disruption, um, which, which started, I guess, probably in, uh, in, in the late part of 2020, early part of 2021, that has affected our ability to supply Raspberry Pis. Unfortunately, it has um, disproportionately uh, affected our ability to supply Raspberry Pis to consumers. So hopefully in a year's time, I, I think probably, if we accomplish one thing over the next 12 months, it would be to rectify that situation, because you know, it's, it's, that's, that's not good for anybody. Um, Further out, um, obviously in the future there will be new Raspberry Pi products. Um, I would expect probably a continuing increase in processing performance over the five or ten year time frame. Uh, you know, we need to be able to post some sort of increase in, in, in processing power on the device. Um, there are new, you know, there are new, there are always new standards. There are new graphics standards. There are new video standards. There are new capabilities that people need, whether it's in uh, uh, machine learning. Uh, whether it's in image processing. So there are always new things to do. I think I, I think it's unlikely Raspberry Pi will come to look radically different. You know, we have three form factors now for Raspberry Pi. We have the compute module form factor for deep embedded. We have the classic simple board computer, which is still by far the largest portion of our volume. Uh, and then we have the Pi 400 um, form factor. Um, I do hope we keep doing Pi 400s. Uh, that's been a real surprise to us. I mean, as a measure of kind of the optimism, I guess, that, that afflicted us in the early part of 2020, we did an enormous amount of philanthropically funded to get um, Raspberry Pi computers into the hands of disadvantaged young people in the UK um, who had been sent home to study from home but without any real computing capability. And I remember in, uh, in April, Raspberry Pi 400 launched in November uh, of 2020, and I remember in April thinking, man, like, we're shipping Raspberry Pi 4s out to these kids and thinking, man, you know, these kids really need Pi 400s. It'll all be over by the time that, uh, it'll be over by the time Pi 400 is available. But yeah, 400 has proved its worth in those kind of applications. Um, so I hope we can keep doing 100 series 
uh, 100 series products. I can't imagine it really evolving significantly away though in terms of form factor. I think those three form factors for us now really cover what we think is the space of purely industrial for compute module, purely consumer for the 100 series products, uh, and then the single board computer which sits in the middle and sells into both markets. Uh, and then of course we have the Pico line products. Um, so you know, what, what's the big thing that's changed for us over the last couple of years? We've gone from being a company which takes other people's silicon uh, and builds products around them to a company that makes its own silicon, builds products around them, but also sells that silicon to third parties. So, I, so what I'm hoping is that you know, the Pico line of products continues, but also that we see this, uh, you know, we have seen, partly I think propelled by the, or certainly accelerated by the shortage of other semiconductors, we've seen this explosion, this kind of efflorescence of, uh, of third-party boards built around the RP2040 platform. So I'm, what I'm hoping is that that ecosystem grows and that we end up in a world where, you know, Pico's a fun board because it has two Raspberry Pi logos on, right? It has a Raspberry Pi logo on the board and a Raspberry Pi logo on the chip. What I hope we see is a profusion of boards that just have one Raspberry Pi logo on, on the chip. I hope when Raspberry Pi comes up in conversation, people see it as a platform that lets them solve problems. Right, it's a tool. It's a general purpose tool. Yeah, computers are general purpose tools. We're enormous, um, whether it's in the education space as a way of giving young people um, access to opportunity they might not otherwise have had, or whether it's in the um, whether it's in the industrial space where it's allowing maybe a small kind of a mom and pop OEM to build a piece of hardware which would have been wildly built beyond their reach before they had access to the SPC or the compute module platform. Um, we, we, we're enormous enthusiasts for general purpose computing. General purpose computing doesn't need to exist, right? We come from a, a, a historical era of general purpose computing where every computer in your home was a general purpose computer, your Apple II, your Trash 80, your Commodore 64, your BBC Micro, your Sinclair Spectrum. They were general purpose computers because for a period of time, the way to give people what they wanted, which was machines to word process or machines to play computer games on, the most efficient, the most cost-effective way of giving them a thing that could do that was to give them a general purpose computer. And what we've seen, and Raspberry Pi is a reaction against this, is the carving away of successive niches in that space from general purpose into what we would call appliance computing. Probably the first and deepest cut, the one that Raspberry Pi is a, uh, is a, is a delayed reaction to, is the carving away of computer gaming um, from of all but the hardest the, the most hardcore PC gaming the carving away of that into a world of games consoles but you've seen sort of Chromebooks I guess carve away a lot of productivity from general purpose computing into appliance computing um, general purpose computing the PC and the Mac really were the last when Raspberry Pi came Raspberry Pi is now the third most popular general purpose, purpose computing platform in history after the PC and the Mac um, when uh, Raspberry Pi came along, those two platforms were the last kind of bastion of general purpose computing, and there was no guarantee that that bastion wouldn't fall at some point. So we really believe in general purpose computing. We believe in computers as tools. We believe in them as, in them as problem-solving devices, as, as, as general purpose tools for solving problems. So I hope when people talk about Raspberry Pi, when they think about Raspberry Pi, particularly in the hobbyist and the industrial community, I hope they think about them as being a platform for solving problems.